I'm starting to question whether I'm cut out for gliding. <clears throat> I've had doubts about everything I've ever done with flying. This is no exception. I'll be starting here in just a minute or two. Those darn chicken nuggets. I wanted to start on time and I'm a little behind. Bear with me, please. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I need to run and get some coffee too, so.
with any luck, Hans and Henning will come back into the stream today. Maybe Nemesis Chicken will show up too. They could be there right, right now. That's what I'm trying to work out. I'm trying to get my chat popped out. One of these days I'll learn how to automate things. Click a button and everything just goes right where it should. Gonna get that coffee. Yes. episode gliding and dying Thursday November 30th 2023 broadcasting out of Colorado Springs Colorado home of Nora at home of the star the Stargate Another title for today that we could use Gliding for Dummies. I'll explain in a moment. Let me sip this fine coffee. Gliding over Sedona, Arizona. K says K S E Z. If you'd like to join, you know what I forgot to say. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you might be in time and space. This is Kinius, and I am seriously questioning. Well, I think it left to my own devices. But I'm not under the pressure of live streaming and I just have hours to sit here and fly circles. Then maybe one day too I will consider myself a, a soaring pilot. 
but it's been painful going. Okay, so the reason why I'm also calling this dummies for gliders is I have uh, watched some videos and I have tweaked the weather settings for optimal gliding, right? So I followed along with what other people have set. We turn on 3D thermals and you'll get an idea of what we're, sh what we're what's going on here. I've found pockets, and maybe that's just settings, pockets of uh, sink where there's nothing I can do. I'm just cruising along, and all of a sudden the plane just decides, uh uh, no, bye. And you just fall to the ground. So I'm just, uh, I'm doing what they're saying, that you find a thermal, it's, this is what is in the uh, tutorials as well, find the thermal, and then spin a circle in it and ride it up. But, it's so uh, easier said than done. I mean, everything's indicating that the wind is rising here. So normally, yeah, you want... I don't know if you want it in your uh, as a tailwind or if you want to fly into it. I would think that you'd want to turn into it to generate lift not you know we're not looking for speed at the moment we're just looking for lift see that's an area of sink we're just we're just kind of falling. I'm not really messing with the joystick too much. I just want to see what it does. Just how it uh, wants to glide.
I'll apply some nose up trim to try to maybe hold us a little um a little straighter. Please, if you're not able to hear me right, let me know. I'm always fiddling with the um, the volume levels and my microphone levels, and I need to make sure that I'm being heard clearly over the music. So if you find the music too loud, please let me know. It's currently at 57%. Some people said they, they can't even hear it at, you know, uh, below 40. And I usually have it set to 9 because I just want it barely heard. I don't want to fight with the music. Listen to that. That was an area of an... In, now, then we spin and lose, lose power. We had this beautiful uptick of wind. Let's go with it and uh, not able to recover. We had this beautiful thermal through the nose up and then lost control of it. I have kind of learned to do some aerobatics, but and I should be at much higher. Still sinking. Turn the uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator audio down a little bit. Uh, she wants to flip over there. Okay, so thermal, right? See, try to turn and just start turning. That's it. Biden and dying.
trying to drop the the, the base of the cloud at now and see if we get uh, better lift for dummies down here a little bit lower to the ground. Even that, even then, dummy can't get lift. We are starting to gain some altitude. It's not pretty, but it's happening. We are gaining altitude. I mean, slow. Oh, now we're losing it. Ah, uh, now we lost it. Flip this over. Lost it again. Good afternoon, Henny. How are you? 
I've got the settings set for dummies, sir. So we have really, really strong, strong thermals. Oh, well, that's just fine. Hope you're having a great day wherever you are. Cheers, let me raise my coffee to you. So yeah, I went out and watched a couple more videos on how to tweak your settings so you have better thermals. And principles of, uh, uh, through, the, through the training again, principles of circling in the thermal. So that's what I've been trying to do here now that I've got uh, it set here. Trying to keep the uh, speed on the diamond at the moment and just try to keep it, keep the plane moving. I said I needed to move my rudder controls because I'm really noticing today when I'm trying to do a twist and a turn, it, uh, It is rather difficult to apply rudder and a turn uh, at uh, opposite rudder. I suppose I could just switch my rudder controls around, set this up for a glider. So that when I apply a left turn, it applies when I, whatever. When I twist the joystick and turn, it automatically induces.
You know you sure aren't getting anywhere fast, that's for sure. Let's see if I go maybe in, into it a little bit deeper. And rotate over towards that vortex a little bit. Well, we'll wish Hans a great day wherever he's at. And thank him for inspiring us. And hopefully we'll see him again. Oh, lost it. Sinking. Come on, recover. She's so hard to recover when she starts doing that. All that, and just all of a sudden, one area of sink and done. Yeah, I'm going to probably be streaming tomorrow. So far, nothing's come up uh, with regards to real world activities. All right, let me. trying everything trying to everything to control uh, yaw elevator pitch everything
35 minutes after the hour. Yeah, I'll definitely, I'm definitely trying everything, Captain. Everything. <laughs> Pardon me. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I'd like to figure out how to teleport that high. Yeah, I'll definitely have to set up slew mode. a way in the main menu to set it to start. I just have forgotten. That when you start, you click on the ground, there's a way to adjust the starting altitude. this one to set it out here. <laughs> Let me look that up real quick.
custom departure point. It puts you like 8,000 feet. Go to Navlog and set custom altitude. So you have to have a destination, then you get your nav log. Aha. Uh -huh. It before I just couldn't remember. Use it if you don't use it, you lose it, right? Trying to understand that re relationship between your diamond point, which is your climb, and keeping an eye on the uh, the altimeter to see, or, or even the uh, damn it, now I can't remember the the dial at the bottom there that shows your pitch, your pitch indicator. It's where you're at least trying to fly fly level. Like there, just trying to be above zero.
Kenny, you have a great day, sir. Thank you for stopping in. Cheers. I'm gonna grab my coffee. Cheers and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So close to being straight in love, or you know, level. Oops, wrong thing. I'm not even near one. I mean, there's something going on here, but we're not a strong one.
All right, I'm gonna try checking my rudder controls. <clears throat> Gizmo scale.
Uh oh. <laughs> what did I do? Now I have no control over the plane whatsoever.
Oh, hello again. <laughs> Excuse me. I can definitely see why you want to be at this altitude. These altitudes.
Crazy, crazy, crazy. Come on. Maybe it's the music. Maybe it's just a little bit too. Aren't spoilers the same thing as speed break? Yeah, I was under the impression that the spoilers were the speed break. Are they something altogether different? Well, that's a point that nobody seems to have brought up so far. In any of the t t tutorials that I've seen, I haven't heard mention of spoilers. Or, you know, again, if you don't use it, you lose it. I did the glider training when it first came out. But that was just to get through all the lessons. But I don't recall any lessons about spoilers or... Yeah, if I'm missing a completely uh, important part of the flight controls, yeah, that would make sense why, you know, my performance is lacking. So... In a glider, you need the blue little thing on the left to control your height. I'm just looking here. On the left. So this is the speed brake right here. Right, so that's speed brake. Got my gear. 
this right here. Is this our spoilers? So when I set that control up, that profile, it blew all, blew all the controls out. Go back to default here. Okay, that's working. There's a whole lot to do with them. So let's just start with something simple here. Extending the spoilers and retracting the spoilers. Jesus, it's always said to something else. Jesus, even that said something else. That's now speed break. What? That's yeah, that's spoiler now. What? See, when I'm toggling for spoilers, that's the blue bar.
that's weird it's it's using the same controls as speed brake what because on the joystick I type in sp speed break. What? I'm trying to figure out spoilers versus speed break. I'll be darned. Okay. All right, then. Well, I've got to figure out what this green thing is, then. So what is... So what is this? Aha. Uh -huh. That's the... That's the trim, you said? So that's speed break to go down, and that's to go up. That's for trimming, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, not you. I want you. Jesus. Aha. Get some more altitude.
Uh oh. Yeah, and that's the way it's been going this afternoon. Gliding and dying. Gliding and dying. Bottom of the hour, I'm gonna take a small little break here. Step back from the controls. And, uh have a smoke break and answer and enjoy a little bit of coffee and think about everything for the last half hour hour last hour and a half this gliding stuff is super challenging Probably the hardest thing I've done so far. I haven't uh, really gotten to the bush flying. I expect the bush flying is going to be difficult too without a, uh, well, just flying tail draggers in general. They're inherently unsafe and they, you know, I don't really dig tail draggers, but tail draggers will tell you the same thing as glider pilots that you just don't have enough and rudder control you don't have enough flying hours you don't under you know you're not a good pilot if you can't fly a tail dragger or a glider you're just not a good pilot i mean i, I i've seen it said and i get it i get it i get it because this is just super difficult right if you can fly gliders you can fly tail draggers says um is heading in the chat room from Germany by the way how honored are we to have not one but two Germans in the chat room you aren't gonna fly well other than an Englishman okay look and that's I want to stay out of that debate altogether you know but other than a German or an Englishman being in your chat room helping you flying I mean what more could one ask for <laughs> yep I what if I ever wanted an instructor all the best guys on YouTube well I Maybe I'm generalizing and stereotyping, but predominantly it seems that there's a lot more German and English video sim pilot trainers. And there's stuff is always on point and perfect and their presentations are on point and perfect. You don't mess around, Jack. Get it right. That's why I was so happy when I heard Asobo was doing it. Like, aren't they Germans? Yeah. Woohoo! Why are you hooing? Because it'll get done right. I remember when I was involved with wanting to get Star Trek Online made. This is wait like five to ten years before the damn thing was even made. We were in the community trying to find, you know, discuss what we wanted and who we wanted to make it. Everybody was like, we need some Germans, man. If you don't get the Germans, it's going to suck. And it's the suck. 
it's totally ass. It's not a simulator at all. It's a just it's a stupid MMO. I stuck with it because I thought that they would change. <laughs> I'm an idiot. But, you know, my interest was really in the internet radio part of it. I can't I went from podcasting uh, the Hailing Frequency podcast the internet's first podcast dedicated to Star Trek gaming. And I was the co-host of that for a number of years. Went out to a lot of the conventions and did all of the Star Trek online interviews. And that was pretty much my specialization. If I wasn't doing fleet radio, the music segment for the podca- podcast, uh, my real interest was the development of Star Trek online. And uh, yeah, I specifically remember conversations about look if we if you don't get Germans to do this it's gonna be shit it's gonna be horrible and yeah I mean perpetual was working on it and there was some control there a little bit to who was gonna work on things and then um something happened with the license and all of a sudden cryptic studios got it and they're like yeah it'll evolve we're like will it evolve into simulation then finally they told us no, it will not be a simulator. Ugh. Can't we please have a simulator like, like this? This right here. Why can't you why can't you create the best of all worlds? You're gonna have an MMO infrastructure. It's gonna be a lot of cloud-based crap. You know, why not go with something more on the lines of simulated starships? Supposed to the you know, whatever it is. I'm still waiting for that one of these days. It'll happen. I really want to fly starships the way they're meant to be flied. Flown. Flew. Got the trim set. He gads. That track is this track is much louder than the last. Um, my bad. I'm not used to. Uh, Grouping or inviting, but I forgot to even mention it that if you're coming in to group or invite, okay, so let's put determine this way. My other interest right at the moment, I'm, I was playing like six games and live streaming them all at one point, and then all of a sudden just total burnout. Um, but right now, and I'm almost timid to say uh, the next thing, um, because people think it's silly. 
but I have an interest in um, The Sims. It's more, uh, it's more of an interest in Sim City. I really loved Sim City, but it's currently dead, and we have The Sims, and they've got Maxis working on something called Project Renee, and nobody really knows anything about it. But I'm interested in The Sims because I've been wanting the two products to join together um, probably since SimCity 2000 or when the, when the Sims came out. And so I'm also live streaming The Sims 4 in the evenings now. And what I'm exploring is Sim and NPC interactions. Now, Sims 2, they had amazing AI, and the and the Sims and your and your Sims interacted. Meaning not just they interact like in in public, but that they can affect each other. Right? They can have relationships, they can meet each other, they can have good or bad relationships, and they can also cause one or an NPC to alter itself the best example i have of this right now is i've created some criminals that are really low level at the moment and i've created some cops who are mid-level getting promoted into higher levels okay so they've got more skill at the moment so i was playing one of my criminals the other night trying to level him up and he's just starting the job in his criminal criminal career so i'm out at the bar creating mischief with this character and I see my cop character, and I'm like, ah, ha, ha. I'm going to go introduce myself to him. I know he's a cop. So I went over there, and I, int I introduced myself to the cop, and uh, my cop character, whom I wasn't playing. It was an NPC at the moment. All right. And all of a sudden, I get this pop-up saying, basically, after talking to the cop, your criminal is now considering giving up his life of crime. Do you want to change his traits? That's far out. That's what I'm talking about. Is creating sims that can alter other sims. So uh, this cop can uh, that I've now that I've created and worked up left to his own devices can affect the general population and reform a criminal. Okay, now on the Sim City side of things. Police stations are very important. And having good crime, good law enforcement when you're creating um, larger cities, especially. You really, you know, or even cities, XL, cities two, crime, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So when you plop down a police department with jail cells, yada, 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 it does have an impact on your society. Now, potentially the education level of the police officers being hired, I don't know how it takes account into any of that. But in SimCity, basically, there's no control. You don't know if the cops that are working in the city are any good. So by being able to tie into the Sims and link to the Sims and being able to click a button and go back and forth between the two games you have a reason now to customize certain sims like your police sim so that you know for a fact that they're all high level and they're fantastic so that when you pop back out to sim city mode to work on things you know that those guys are running around your your crime rating will be dramatically affected I hope any of that makes sense, and I hope you're not bored out of your mind as we just sit here and spin in circles. I've just been waiting to see if we catch any altitude, and but we're doing pretty good. We haven't fallen. I know that uh, I've been watching glider videos now, and it's not the most exciting thing watching people go in circles. But without going in circles, I you don't really learn much, they say. You have to be able to learn how to gain altitude in these thermals. I did watch a cool video on aerobatics, right? 
uh, and basically it seems like the sweet spot is right there, a hundred, a hundred knots or whatever, and that'll allow you to do your loop de loops as long as you get uh, about a hundred. You know, I wasn't able to with Hans. He was doing all these flips and dives and just being Mr. Fantastic. I'm like, how in the world? How in the world is he doing any of that? I can't. He's just, I can't even get the thing to, if I try to turn it over. Uh oh. If I try to turn it over. Speed brake. Let's do the speed brake when we stall. And put the nose trim up. All right, speed brake. Speed break. Oh, I'm ah, a little too fast. Should have ballast dropped the ballast too. So that right there, just me doing what I've what I had just done there in the last one minute. It is probably the best flying, you know, at least maneuvering because I haven't been able to do a turn, a loop, a spin, anything. I've just been sitting there like a grandma, uh, just driving and trying to hold a, hold it straight and level and spin a circle. I really hope they bring combat back to micro microsoft flight simulator if they don't i hope somebody corners the market and releases an add-on that brings combat to it i don't know there i don't uh, i don't understand their reluctance to get into the fight game everybody's like well go to dcs world i don't want to go to dcs world i dig it i i mean if i you know if i have to fine 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 but i really don't want to i would i would rather i love this i love microsoft flight simulator and this is what i want to play and this is the engine i want to use and i want the darn combat so I played DCS world I dig it I love it but that's not where I want to be and so when they released they said they were gonna do the top gun the top gun expansion pack i was so happy i'm like at least we'll maybe get that that mission that they run in the in the top gun movie right that cool ass mission where they've got to go through the valleys and da -da 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 -da, breakneck speed and hold it low to the ground and then come up on that hill and flip inverted and do the death star plunge you know well we got the dark star and that's about you know which was cool but other than that it's just high speed racing in a jet you know i mean you in the training and the those missions you are kind of doing that you are flying low to the ground and you got to hurry up and get through these 
these uh, ranges and but where's the payoff man where's the money shot where's the flipping up flipping inverted coming back down and grease in the hole <laughs> The Dark Star is pretty impressive. I mean, the you know the mission that they've got for it, learning how to use it. Holy crap, man! Talk about it. Uh, I didn't even think we could go that fast. It's crazy. Took me three minutes, three three or four days of live streaming. To go from Colorado all the way up to California in my last cross country. And that thing takes like 40 minutes to cross the entire United States. Uh oh, breathing heavy. Drop the ballast. Get the gear down. Speed brake. Ballast, year, speed break. Ah, uh, nope, lost it. so the plane can't drift. Sounds like Manana. Drop ballast. Gear. wing off
<laughs> with, uh, with less copyright. Absolutely. How was that one? It's still rolling even. Oh, shoot, man. Just that you're even here. What an honor. We put my hands together in that prayer. Hey. Hey. Thanks for even showing up. Cheers. Let me, uh... I need a new copy. I'm still rolling. Haven't put a wing down yet. I think that was pretty sweet. Still rolling. All right, breaks. That was all right for me. It was freaking fantastic. <laughs> Let me grab a copy. Oh, uh, one minute, please. The breaks will kick in. Yeah, I thought I did. There you go. All right, coffee time. One moment. with coffee. All right. Well, now that I know where my brakes, uh, I have a sticky brake button, so I, w I use my keyboard controls to finally stop there. I don't know if uh, you remember, but if you wanted to join, I'm at Case Says. Oh, that's good copy. I'm going to pay for it later. Okay.
Oh, darn it. So close. Control stall on the ground at like oh, five meters. Down right or left in rudder opposite position. Yeah, you're on right or left in rudder opposite direction. Yep, slipping. I'm slipping right now. I'm trying to just bring my ass end around. My rudders is full right deflection while my nose is tipping this way just to bring the nose around and keep my butt going to the right and trying to keep my now the other other way so left full left rudder deflection okay let me try to so same thing now full full right rudder deflection bringing the nose all the way around full right rudder deflection up Right rudder deflection, speed brake. Speed brake off. Ah! Uh. I don't recall it. I went through all the training. I even recorded it as I was going through it. But no, um... I thought that was slipping, but that's, I'm, I guess I'm thinking about crabbing. We can go back to the training.
I have done it all, and I've done all the training, but, uh, I mean, I, I know all of this stuff, but I haven't come in and done all these. Like this, I mean, I completely know how to do all this, but I haven't done anything. I did do this. Slipping. Twelve oh nine here in the Midwest. Kenny is here with Hans and Henning in the chat room, and ref uh, refreshing our memory with the slip tutorial. If you find yourself high, as we do in Colorado, uh, oh, I, it went by. Okay. Ooh, my keyboard. Where's the ballast in this thing? See the runway. That right there? What? I don't see the damn runway. Runway two. Yeah, I blew it. I don't know where the hell the runway's at. And way left. This over here.
But I don't think this is it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so basically like crabbing. The same it's the same idea. When you've got a crosswind on a landing when you have a high wind crosswind or shears coming in for a landing, yeah, you might be being blown over to one side. So you have to keep your nose nose pointed and then keep full rudder deflection so that the plane is basically flying sideways crabbing or so now they call it slipping and gliding but I, I i get it i get the idea and how that is going to if you're not so basically if you're not dealing with the crosswind and you're inducing it by yourself that's slipping but if you're doing it with crosswind to counteract it coming in for a landing then you're crabbing And the jury says, do, 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 do. How long have you been uh, flighting gliders? And um, how long have you been doing simulator? doesn't matter. Wow. Okay, so check this out. I didn't grow up at the airfield, but my dad flew a plane. My dad had a Piper Cherokee when I was a, a little, little kid. And uh, maybe nine years old, somewhere in there, maybe nine, ten. And so I would fly with him in his training, and he took me out, took me up for stall training one day, and the butterflies in my stomach. I actually described it. A little bit differently where you know you get these weird sensations all over when you're a nine-year-old kid and you're doing stalls and all kinds of things so trying to explain it what you're experiencing can kind of be a little embarrassing well it was for me um so then it was the late 70s And my dad was visual flight rules rated, but he didn't continue. You know, guys in the 70s, they were so macho. They think they can drive or fly something that they don't need more training. Once they get, once they have the general understanding. So for whatever reason, my dad didn't do IFR. He was flying back and forth between Wyoming and Colorado Springs. And he 
didn't study the weather and didn't plan ahead and, you know, did everything you, you're you supposed to do wrong, basically. Just have a six-pack of Coors and take off, man. So we got caught in the... Yes, yes. If I If I see it. Let me get in here. I don't see any friends online. I'll double check things. Multiplayer on. Online functionality on. Alright, so my dad was learning how to fly. That was the story he was on. And, um... He had to be talked by, talked down by air traffic control when he got caught in a zero visibility situation. And that unnerved him so bad and upset my mother so much that she demanded he sell the plane and quit flying. Plus, everybody was mad at him that, you know, the air traffic controls, they tend to be... And, uh, so I always wanted to learn how to fly because of my dad. So then when I finally got early Microsoft flight simulators, uh, I couldn't land for the first two years. I just, whatever I tried, I, I had a fear of landing and I botched every landing. Oh, the the sad part on the plane, it gets even worse. When my dad sold the plane, he negotiated, again, remember, 1970s. So imagine this situation. I come home from school and whatever, it's early in the evening, and this guy shows up with these two Playboy models, basically. And he's trying to negotiate the price for the airplane with my father and the next thing you know cocaine comes out and boobs are being popped out boobs are being popped out by these playboy bunnies to negotiate a lower price which worked as I heard anyway that same guy and I don't know if it was those same ladies that were with him he then proceeded to take that plane and and attempt to fly mountain flying around Pikes Peak call in Colorado. And he crashed into the side of Pikes Peak, killing everybody on board. In my dad's plane. <laughs> so I've been at this for about seven or eight years but again the first two years I just couldn't land then I gave it up for a while then I came back and learned some stuff I'm still not seeing anybody online um and then like one year two years before Microsoft Flight Simulator came out I got heavy into Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, X, FSX on Steam. And I went through every lesson and I did it over and over and over. And I watched all the Rod Machado videos and I did them over and over and over. And then I watched every flight video I could on YouTube. And I just kept flight videos playing 24 seven on YouTube in the background. Even while I was sleeping, I was gonna figure this crap out one way or the other. And then I got X-Plane, and then I started 
exploring all the stuff I'm learning in the tutorials on how to get your licenses and what's required. Uh, and then Microsoft, well then, um, Dovetail Games got the license to do FSX Steam, and then they created Flight Sim World and Flight School, and I did both of those. And then Microsoft pulled the license from Dovetail and made them pull those two pieces of software off the market. And then they announced Flight Simulator 2020, and I immediately signed up for the alpha, and I got into that. So basically almost exactly the same as you like the last four years, very serious. Very, very, very serious. I think my dad would be impressed. He's no longer with us. When I was, uh, before he left, uh, I was just getting into navigation. So I really didn't get to impress him fully. I think my dad would be very impressed with all the IFR stuff I can do and the GPS stuff I can do. And, um, shit, man, flying airliners. Showing my dad that, at least in the simulator, I don't, you know, I'm not brave enough in the real world to do something like that. Right. The story was really interesting, and then it became really, really sad. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the 1970s man, sideburns and mustaches and feathered hair, women that look like Farrah Fawcett, Kate Jackson. Well, I was waiting to see if I could pick somebody up. Flipping. Come on. Speed brake slipping. Come on, you turn. Slipping. Oh, speed break. Oh. Too much speed break. Right. I'm noticing that for sure. Don't the hard part about slipping, says Henning, is don't let the nose wander off.
What? 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 I really need to set a key for the ballast.
you son of a gun. Ah! I'm high enough. Right, I'm being really aggressive. What I was hoping to do is try to... I want to do an Immelman. Go up, do the flip, come back facing the opposite direction, play the speed brakes and nail it. Camera go. Hate when that happens. So the thing is, I can do it under panic conditions. Yeah, I can do it slow. I'm gonna blow my pants if I don't get down to the runway right now. I see. Touchdown more with the tail wheel. Which 
trying to slip now. Why, thank you.
If I don't see you tomorrow, you have a wonderful day. Let me raise my coffee to you. Pause music for a moment. Hey, you have a wonderful day. And uh, again, cheers. And a wonderful evening. Cheers, cheers, cheers. All right. It is 45 minutes after the hour. I told Hans the very first day that we met him, or the second day, because Nemesis Chicken was there, or either way, the very first day, this the first day that we did gliding together, I asked him to give me one week before we seriously, like, try to fly around together. I said, give, give me a week. Let me let me try to get my head around all this. And I hope by next Saturday that, you know, I'll know something. <laughs> Good night. So I'm trying to stick to that. So other than, you know, trying to catch thermals now, but being able to put it back down on the ground. And we learned a little bit today about spoilers. And we learned about uh, the trim control. So yeah, we learned a little bit about a, little, uh, a lot of things. We learned about using our ballast to dump it. Getting our brakes, uh, our gear down. Learning how to use the speed speed brake effectively up in the air as well as down for landing, for slipping. Learning how to use our our trim over here. Oh, this is the this is that Madonna with less copyright. Yeah, and slips and and good landings. So, I think you know. I'm on track to it helps when you have people watching because then you're under the gun to perform <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I better really start thinking about wrapping the show up I think that's enough for the day I've got to get back to um the sims later Uh, whoops. There we go. So, thank you to Hans. Thank you to Henning for coming in and spending the afternoon with me. And uh, words of encouragement and uh, training. And I think that was a productive, productive session today. So I look forward to seeing what we get tomorrow. Cheers. Cheers and thank you. Let me raise my coffee to you. All right. Again, same to you. Have a wonderful evening and... Um... Well, in the evenings, I'm just doing The Sims, but... Um... What time is... Let me turn the music off here. When do you, what hours do you fly? What, um, when do you normally fly? And I could try to be available. I do stay up really late. I'm an, I'm more of a night owl person. Getting up to do the 10 a.m. shows is kind of, uh, for me. Because I'm always up so late. So... You know, I'm definitely going to be up when you're starting your day. Or, you know. Do you have Skype or Discord or anything like that? I could just also...
Yeah, I'm on Mountain Time. All you gotta do is just plug it into the Mountain Time. You're probably about 13, 14, or 15, I would say. Maybe a little more. UK is 13 hours ahead. Or a 13-hour difference. I'm used to working with people in the UK. You know, so being up late at night as well. Well, that's one way. 14 hours. Okay. So when... Um, So it's one o'clock in the afternoon here right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Is it one o'clock in the morning there? Yeah, so what time is it? What time is it right now? Oh, it's only 8.51? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, so 8 hours. 8.52 p.m. Okay. Okay, so what time do you normally, what is your, when is your schedule usually, or what's you know, what's an average time that you're usually around and, and wanting to fly? What time of day? Man, today felt good. I'm so stupid. I'm so psyched because, you know, even today when I started, I was still a little down. I'm like, ah, I'm really not getting this. 1 or 3 p.m.? 2, 1, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. It's like 7 in the morning here. Well, I will at least... <laughs> I'm sometimes I've stayed up all night. I usually rate make it to seven in the morning. But another thing that I can do is I can have the simulator running at you know whatever three in the morning or whatever. I'll just leave it on uh, when I go to bed or leave it up. And that way, if I I can open my eyes and I can see uh, if there's an invite or request. Or I can leave it at, uh, so let me go back to the main screen. I can leave it. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah, up in the main menu, and I can see if there's any players online or invites that are being sent my way. And if I happen to open my eyes, or if I'm awake, uh, all I need to do is just keep an eye on this. This and this, or if an invite pops up, then I'll know that you're out there. Something like that, maybe? I need to hook a big horn to the system somehow and generate a, a sound. 4 p.m. Yeah, I'll try not to pull an all-nighter, and if I do pull an all-nighter, I'll try to be available earlier. We'll work it out. We'll work out a, a schedule. We'll find we'll find what out work, what works for us. I I remember again working with my uh, podcast buddies in the UK. You know, at the start it was weird too, but after a while we just fell into the groove. We found our times. All right, gentlemen. 
Let me give you a little salute. Have a wonderful evening, and 